on to verse 11. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we do that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The book of Romans is one of the outstanding books of the New Testament to set out the Christian faith. The author, the Apostle Paul, sets out a masterful treatise on the doctrine of justification by faith alongside many other doctrines. And when we read these verses from verse 1 to 11 of, of Romans 5, we want to dip into the rest of the chapter and we really want to take verse 8 as our text. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. A number of years ago, I saw this verse on the fence along the Coleraine Ring Road. Obviously one of the firms had put this up. It's not there anymore, but it um, did catch my attention and I started to think about it. And when I uh, looked at the verse and in its context, I saw the three parts to this verse and I have just these three points that I would like us to think about um, this evening. Firstly, the love of God. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. Firstly, his nature, God's nature. Maybe the best known verse in the whole Bible is John verse chapter 3 and verse 16. Very well known for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God's love shown in this. Other verses saying similar things in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Or John uh, later in his epistle, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice. Or Paul again in Ephesians 2, but because of his great love for us, 
God who is rich, and, and so forth. The love of God is uh, stated on so many occasions. Not only his nature, but his demonstration. If we consider these verses, they tell us that God loves us. But God does more than just tell us. He actively demonstrates his love for us. When we consider and appreciate the cross, then, and maybe only then, can we see the love of God for sinners. In verse 5, God poured out his heart. When we think of someone pouring out something, he's, he's making a real effort to display, to express something. And God expresses his love, not only in what he says, but in what he did when he sent his son on to the cross. It was Augustine, way back in the early part of the Christian faith, he called the cross a pulpit from which Christ preached God's love to the world. In some of the other translations, they use the word command, a good word. But God not only commands it, but demonstrates it as Jesus gave his life on the cross. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, it, it says he became obedient to death, even death on the cross. God's love is the first thing we want to see, his nature and his demonstration. But our second point is our condition or man's condition. Again in verse Eight, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. Why we were still sinners. We know we are sinners. The Bible describes it on many occasions. In chapter 4 and verse 25, Paul says again, he was delivered over to death for our sins, for the sins of the human, human life. Not only do we see that we are called sinners, and we know we are sinners, but it says in verse 6 of this chapter, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, we were in a bad state but just at the right time Jesus Christ meets us in our need. We were still powerless. Christ died for the ungodly. Those of us, all of us who are born in sin, who are shaped in iniquity and who are strangers to God and to grace. We are sinners, we are ungodly, we are enemies. In verse 10, for if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled through the death of his son. We are called enemies. In Colossians, in chapter 1, and verse 21, it puts it like this. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Why were we alienated from God? It's because of our evil behavior. It's because of our sin, of our wrongdoing. Romans again, back in in chapter 3 and verse 23, 
for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we are sinners, we are ungodly, we are God's enemies, and as a result of our sin, we are facing God's wrath. In verse 9, since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him, through Jesus? Is this wrath that God brings, is it contradicting his love? No, we believe not so. You see, the wrath of God is not like something flying off the handle, losing the plot as it were. Rather, it is a considered, consistent opposition to sin, to evil, to wrong. One of the commentators, Leon Morris, puts it like this, a strong and settled opposition to all that is evil, arising out of God's very nature. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 18, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. God's wrath is his nature. He is a holy God, and he cannot look on sin and on wrong. We can, of course, avoid God's wrath as we uh, read it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9. If I might just take a moment to um, look up that verse, it would be helpful. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but rather to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus, the Lord God, had a plan. The reason that God sent his Son into this world was so that he would provide a salvation for men and for women. And so our third point is God's plan. Verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It was at the beginning of Matthew when the angel was um, giving the name of the Lord Jesus, this baby that was to come, it said he will call, his name will be Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. In verse 7 we read, very rarely would anyone die for a righteous man, righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God's love shows. He demonstrates that he has a rescue plan for sinners. Paul puts it in similar words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 3. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He died because of our sins. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it says the wages, in other words, the result of sin, 
is dead. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin brings death, but God had a rescue plan. You see, God is a God of many attributes. One of the best known, of course, is His love. And we've talked about that already. He is also a God of holiness. He is a God who is just and many other attributes. Sometimes human beings accept some of God's attributes when it suits them, but they sometimes forget some of the important attributes that God has. God is just. Sin demands punishment. Because of our sin, we suffer wrath. We find punishment for our sins. God is love and he sent his son to take the punishment for our sin. So God satisfies his justice and also his love, his mercy. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 6, sorry, verse 26, he did it. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies the man who has faith in Jesus. Jesus Christ bore our sins in his body on the tree, 1 Peter chapter 2 and 24. If we uh, looked up a well-known verse in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Is that not only a statement but a demonstration of God's great love that he sent his son to give his life in our place so that we can have our sins forgiven and have peace with God. As a result, we find a number of things arising out of this, this wonderful demonstration of God's love. One of them is the word justification. As a result of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, as we simply come in believing faith to him, we become right with God. Paul puts it in chapter 3 and verses 22. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. We are justified by His grace if we come through simple faith in Jesus Christ. It is wholly by faith. It's not by observing the faith, reserving, observing the law. In verse 28, for we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. It is the work of God. 
in Romans chapter 8 and verse 33. Who is, verse 3, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Since we have now been justified by his blood, verse 1 of the chapter that we read, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It was John Calvin, uh, one of the, a past generation, he describes justification by faith as the main hinge on which the religion turns. Justification is a, a legal term. It means to acquit or to declare righteous, whereby God declares us righteous with him through faith in Christ's work on the cross. Not only we are justified, but we are saved from wrath. Verse 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? We considered wrath earlier as a consequence of sin, but as we come to Jesus as our Saviour, we will be saved from the coming wrath. Not only that, but we are reconciled to God. The word reconciled means to bring near. It's a, a renewal of friendship, of fellowship. We were strangers to God, far from Him because of our sin. But as we are as we find Jesus as a personal saviour and friend, we are justified, we are saved from wrath, and we are reconciled to God. When we were God's enemies, verse 10, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. And on in verse 11, not only is this so, but we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Through Jesus, we are brought near through the death of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have now been brought near through the blood of Christ. We are justified, we are saved from wrath, we are reconciled to God. The enmity is removed. There's no more alienation. We are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 1 of the chapter we are saved by his light. Verse 10. And uh, for if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his light? It was Jesus himself who said in John chapter 14, recorded in chapter 14 and verse 19, because I live, you also will live. So as we read this verse again, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The love of God man's condition and God's plan, the gospel. It was 
John again, who wrote in his epistle, and I think it's uh, worth reading a couple of verses. 1 John chapter 4 from verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Will you consider this message, this gospel? God has stated it, he has shown it, he has demonstrated it, he has put into place a salvation that, is, that works through simple faith in Jesus Christ. What do you need to do? What do I need to do? We need to come in simple, saving faith, believing that Jesus can deal with our sin and make us right with God. It was the Philippian jailer recorded in Acts chapter 16 who cried out, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul's reply, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And as you think about this, we trust that you might respond in a similar fashion and you will be saved. Let us just pray. Our loving Father, we thank you for this message explained, described in the scriptures, described in Romans chapter 5, among other places. Father, we thank you for the great love of God, how he has demonstrated at the cross as the Lord Jesus, his Son, gave his life on our behalf. Father, we realize that we are born in sin and we need a Savior. And we pray that we might respond to you so that our lives might be turned around. We would have peace with God and we would receive eternal life. We pray, O oh God, that you would speak to all our hearts, enabling us to respond to you. Part us with your blessing, take us to our, our homes in, in peace, and may the God, the, the, the blessing of God, rest upon each of us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.